hey guys uh, today is going to be a bit complicated we're going to see how we can utilize the esophageal pressure to determine the best peep for an ARDS patient this patient was on ABV CMV mode of ventilation which is which is pressure regulated volume control the targeted tidal volume was set at 460 ml based on the ideal body weight with protective long strategy we set the peep at 12 centimeter of water with FiO2 of 60 percent so this data volume was delivered utilizing a peak pressure of around 33 centimeter of water this will give us a driving pressure of plateau pressure we need to put an inspiratory hold to determine the plateau pressure in this case it was 30 centimeter of water and you subtract from it the peep of 12 centimeter of water so the driving pressure was 18 centimeter of water this is what drove this 460 ml into the lungs now the question is is this PEEP appropriate for the patient? In order to determine that, we need to measure the intrathoracic pressure. And we can indirectly measure the intrathoracic pressure by looking at the esophageal pressure. So we have the esophageal probe here. The balloon now is inflated. And we can measure the esophageal pressure on this graph here. This is esophageal pressure in inspiration and this is in expiration. On this graph here, we see the transpulmonary pressure, which is the tracheal pressure minus the esophageal pressure. So this is the transpulmonary pressure in inspiration and here the PEEP minus the esophageal pressure it will give us the transpulmonary pressure in expiration. Now, in order to determine what is the PEEP, the best PEEP for the patient, you can see here that the PEEP is set at 12 centimeter of water. If we look at the esophageal pressure, we can measure that pressure at 15 centimeter of water in expiration. What does that mean? We have a higher pressure around the lungs than the pressure inside the alveoli. What does that do? This higher pressure will compress on the lungs. In other words, it will de-recruit the alveoli in expiration. If you look at the transpulmonary pressure in expiration, which is the PEEP minus esophageal pressure, you will see that it is negative. It is at minus 3 centimeter of water. So that means that this pressure is higher than the PEEP, it will compress on the alveoli. So we need to adjust the PEEP level in a way that we get transpulmonary pressure in expiration above zero and we aim for zero to ten so in fact we need to go up on that peep so let's go up to 18 and see what happens so at peep of 18 we increase the peep here so that pressure in expiration now is above this is above the esophageal pressure and if we take a look on the peep minus esophageal pressure you will see that it is at plus one centimeter of water so we uh, made the transpulmonary pressure in expiration above zero now at least we're not de-recruiting the alve we're not causing any pressure on the alveoli and in fact we can go up higher on the peep now notice that the driving pressure is decreased. You can see here the peak pressure did not change, the plateau pressure did not change. What does that mean that we have a driving pressure that is decreased? 
we delivered the same tidal volume with, with less pressure. What does that mean? Improved compliance. So by increasing the PEEP for the patient, we were able to recruit the lungs better. So the same tidal volume was delivered with less pressure. That's why we see a decrease in the driving pressure. And of course, I measure those pressures dynamically. What you really need to do is you need to put an inspiratory hold and measure the trans pulmonary pressure in inspiration and then put an expiratory hold and measure the trans pulmonary pressure in expiration. So let's do that. Just be before we do that, just wanted to show you here that this is what confirms that the esophageal probe in, is in uh, appropriate location behind the heart. This is, uh, these are oscillations because of the heartbeats. So here we put an inspiratory hold. You can see the same values here with inspiratory hold. So this is inspiration, we held inspiration, and now we're measuring the plateau pressure here. Notice the zero flow here, and this is the esophageal pressure in inspiration. The plateau pressure was 27.6, exactly. The esophageal pressure now is 20.7, and the trans pulmonary pressure is 6.9. So this is esophageal pressure in inspiration, not expiration. We have inspiratory hold here, and this is the esophageal pressure in, in inspiration. Trans pulmonary pressure is 27 minus esophageal pressure of 20.7. That gives us around trans pulmonary pressure in inspiration, around 6.9. Now we need to do the same thing in expiration. So let's put expiratory hold and take a look. So this is expiration and we put a hold in the system here and we measured the esophageal pressure. The PEEP is at 18.5 and the esophageal pressure is measured at 16.9 with transpulmonary pressure in, ex in expiration 1.6. So this will tell me that the PEEP is at least now able to prevent from the recruitment of the lungs in expiration. Now the benefit of measuring the transpulmonary pressure in inspiration and transpulmonary pressure in expiration is to get what we call the true driving pressure. Just subtract the trans pulmonary pressure in expiration from the trans pulmonary pressure in inspiration. That pressure in inspiration was the trans pulmonary pressure in inspiration was 6.9 minus 1.6. That will give us a very low driving pressure. Take a look on the difference between driving pressure of 12 centimeter without doing this procedure and true driving pressure of almost five to six centimeter of water, which is very protective for the, for, for the lungs. And this would be uh, protecting the lungs from any injury from the pressure, from the high pressure and the high tidal volume. I think this pressure did very, this patient did very well and eventually he was recovered. He recovered from uh, ARDS, he was extubated. I think that's all what I have on this patient. Thank you very much.